Hi, I'm Tyra. And I'm Sydney. And this is your weekly update with The Pit News. Two Pittsburgh students, Maureen Deccan, a Pitt sophomore, and Serena Manny, a senior at the Ellis School in Shadyside, co-founded iPods for Alzheimer's, an organization that provides iPods with individualized playlists to patients in order to trigger lost memories. The project is based on studies of correlations between music and an increase in recollection abilities. Deccan and Manny work with residents of Shenley Garden Senior Living Home, and according to Rosemarie Malinowski, Activities Director at the Senior Living Home, they have had a very positive effect on the residents. Taiga was a no-show on last Saturday as Tom Mizoraka, Pitt Program Council Advisor, found out an hour before the event for manager Randall Uritsky. Between 500 and 600 kids showed up for the event that incorporated Jay Hill, Chevy Woods, and last-minute Ty Dollasheim, the original opener. From April 8th to 18th, refunds for students will be available, according to Taylor Steffi. PPC is said to have no plans on rebooking Taiga. After the three recent resignations from student government board members, SGB addressed the student body and announced the application process to fill vacant spots. The application deadline was Saturday, April 5th at 5 p.m. Board member Nicholas Huffnagel told the Pitt News writer, Abby Raygard, that the board decided to decrease the amount of allocations requests it would hear so that the board can focus more on bettering the campus. SGB came under fire during former board member Brandon Benjamin's resignation when Benjamin accused SGB of placing too heavy a focus on the allocations process and pointed out its lack of focus on actually helping the student body. A group of Harry Potter fans recently decided to start a new organization on campus. Their goal in creating the group, besides providing a place for fans of the fantasy series to discuss the books, is to raise money for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Lola Adebi co-president of the club, stated, We wanted to do more than just give other fans a place to nerd out. We wanted to add a cause. This past Monday night, New York Times writer Michael Slackman spoke in the William Pitt Union about foreign affairs. Slackman spoke about his views on the Middle East and the crises that countries in the world are currently facing. He also highlighted his views on the Obama administration's response to these crises and how he feels that clarity is needed from the Obama administration about their response to Egypt and other hot zones. Slackman's lecture provided new insights and perspectives about current events in today's global community. A group of motivated Pitt students is looking for a way to bring a thrift shop to campus. The project initiative is called University of Thriftsburg and aims to open an easily accessible student-run thrift shop. Leaders of the initiative have drawn up a business plan and are ready to take action as soon as they find an available space in a good location. According to a statement on Tuesday, April 1st from David Hickton, U.S. Attorney for the Western District of Pennsylvania, Adam Busby of Dublin, Ireland, was released from detention in Ireland and is currently awaiting a hearing before Ireland's Supreme Court on his appeal of his extradition to Scotland to face terror charges in that country. Busby was indicted on August 15, 2012, for sending more than 50 bomb threats to the University of Pittsburgh. Chancellor Mark A. Nordenberg said the university does not expect a reoccurrence of the bomb threat situation. Looks like fans of Modern Family at Pitt had a blast on Tuesday, April 2nd. Eric Stone Street hugged it out and took selfies with Pitt students in a full William Pitt Union assembly room, answering questions from the audience throughout the Pitt Program Council-sponsored event. According to the Pitt News staff writer Christina Holzer, Stone Street kept the tone of his discussion lighthearted like a stand-up comedy performance. On Wednesday, April 2nd, the lights of the cathedral turned blue in honor of autism awareness. Pitt News staff writer Joelle Smith reports that the event, Lighted Up Blue, was put on by service fraternity Alpha Phi Omega as part of the nationwide initiative for World Autism Day, hosted by Autism Speaks. On Pitt's campus, the group hosted a reception on the patio of William Pitt Union, which featured guest speakers and dance performances. Aside from the Cathedral of Learning, Smith reports that several of Pittsburgh's landmarks, such as the BNY Mellon Building and Fifth Avenue Place, were also lit blue to support autism awareness. Central and South America's sights, smells, and sounds filled Pospar Hall last Saturday for the annual Latin American and Caribbean Festival. Around 3,000 people showed up to partake in the events, according to Julian Asenjo, the Academic Affairs Assistant Director. Among the foods at the event were Uruguayan fried cakes, Bolivian cheese rolls, and tres leches cake. It wasn't just food, though. Artist Jamie Roman sold sculptures from Brazil, Peru, Mexico, and California, while performances continued during the 10-hour event. 
On Wednesday, April 2nd, the University of Pittsburgh hosted Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. The event, organized by Pitt's Computing Services and Systems Development, featured Wozniak's discussion of his relationship with Steve Jobs and their roles in the creation of Apple. The Pitt news writer Harrison Kaminsky reported that the event was attended by around 500 students eager to see the co-founder discuss his life, technology, and answer questions.